influences were a lot of Euro writers and Euro crews um, and looking at art crimes and stuff like that um, I was equally as influenced by crews like FX and PFE and stuff like that like Rockin' in the States so I will say that technically AIDS crew started around 97-98 as an uh, all around hip hop based crew around the four elements. AIDS crew was formally united as a graffiti unit, maybe like it was 2003, 2000, between 2002, 2004 area. And that idea came about between four of the members, Dutch, Diesel, Loser, and myself. Um, upon, after painting together for three years even without repping a uh, crew together, um, because prior to that we thought it was like, there was something to be said about a group of people that painted together that weren't in a crew. Because nowadays, everybody's crew Everybody has a crew, even if there's two of you, you know? And um, so we took a lot of pride in painting for a few years without any crew. And after many, many conversations together, we were on our way to do a highway spot actually one night. And I'll still remember driving past, driving in Jersey City, driving up 440, on our way to do the spot, 280. And yo, tonight, we gotta do it, man. And everybody said, fuck it, let's do it. And that was the first night we all four put up AIDS together. Ground control to pilot. Ready? Thank you. 
I'm interested in a lot of things, and I get bored easily too. So my favorite thing to do when I go out is a different thing every time I go out. <laughs> So, and I do that also because I like to have more or less an equal amount of different styles running. So, if I did a splurter last night, then tonight I'm going to do an install, and then, you know, next week I'm going to paint, and I'm going to do some drawings or a straight or something somewhere. somewhere. Um, and then I want to have a sticker night. The Truism stickers, they came about a few years ago, and there's a few philosophies behind the style and the messages that are on them and everything. So, first off, the style. I love graffiti, but I fucking hate graffiti. And, um... You know, doing a million tags on a sticker and all the same throw up and all this stuff. There's a lot to that, but me personally, like I said before, I get kind of bored with things too. Um, and I like to bridge gaps. And graffiti doesn't have to just be for graffiti writers, and it doesn't have to be for the police that follow it and the business owners that get, you know. One of the things that was telling me about fine art, the more that I studied it, um, and the classic known painters, established painters, it was depressing because a lot of them were not recognized, and I don't mean monetarily or anything like that. Like, a lot of them were not even giving, like, uh, wow, that's a nice piece of work. Like, they weren't even giving compliments until years after they were dead, sometimes centuries after they were dead. Um, and that could say a lot about the artwork, like per perhaps it was ahead of their time. Uh, a lot of times it was. Um, but also it kind of sucks, like, because art is a more or less a thankless craft. Like, you do that shit because you love it, you know? Um, and, you know, so I... I Growing up, I just knew it just felt natural to create shit um, and express. And I knew that I wanted to, or I hoped that I could, you know, just make an influence somewhere, you know, like if it's changed something in the world or if it's like make someone's day good or bad, um, you know, or have my name go down in the history books like these other guys who killed themselves, literally, for art their whole life, um, and didn't re receive recognition while they could appreciate it. So, this was killing me as I got older, and I started trying to think how this, like, you know, could be different, and, um, you know, that's when I found graffiti, and it was more or less like people that were alive and rocking, you know, like, you got that recognition while you were alive, and, you know, it was a lot more exciting than just sitting in the room, painting a bowl of fruit, or, like, even going outside and doing some whatever landscape, and, um, you know, there was all this, there was energy behind it, and there was rebellion, you know, and I grew up as a, as a real vandal, not a graffiti writer, to bring some creativity into the rebellion, and more purpose, into the vandalism and the destruction that appealed to me as well. Not wanting to disown fine art, you know, wanting to pay respect to the people that put in the real work ahead of us because very few of us have figured out any true original techniques that weren't figured out by someone ahead of us. So I want to pay respect to art as a culture and beauty as a culture. Well, at the risk of sounding like a <laughs> total asshole, uh, or a purist, or an elitist, I've been called in many of these things. I will accept the term purist. So, anyone that is interested in graph nowadays, I think, should ignore 
the internet, more or less, um, and should focus on reading some of the materials and watching some of the videos that are classics to this culture, you know, um, it's still a young culture, but just like every culture you have, you have literature, you have theories, um, you have understandings and things like that, that there's places you can find this stuff, um, even if you do grow outside of graffiti or outside of the urban area or something like that, you know, so, Ignore popular culture, learn graffiti history, practice, you know, don't discredit paper and sketching while you're watching TV and shit, like, uh, practice a lot with your hands on paper, practice going down um, after that, and um, also, like, practice sort of in your head, you know, you can visualize doing pieces and you can visualize being in spots, um, and you'd be surprised how much you can teach yourself and learn from those things, and fucking try not to paint shit that other people paint, try not to paint stuff that looks like other people, and learn how to be influenced without straight biting. <laughs>